So by now you should be able to prove at the theorem that any cycle can be expressed as a product of transpositions. And in fact we found that we could express a cycle like 2, 5, 3 as a product of two transpositions. And so a question we can ask is can we find a different product of transpositions that also give us 2, 5, 3? Let's make things a little bit more challenging and see where that takes us. So again, our elements don't necessarily have an order, but suppose we have one, or suppose we create one, and limit ourselves to transpositions of adjacent elements. So the question is, can we express a permutation as a product of transpositions of adjacent elements? So our cycle is 2, 5, 3. So let's use 2, 3 as our first transposition, where we'll just take the expected ordering of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So can we write 2, 5, 3 as 2, 3 times something? And of course the answer is yes, because 2, 3 has an inverse, and we can calculate the value of that other permutation. And it works out to be 2, 5. And so 2, 5, 3 is 2, 3, 2, 5. So we've expressed our cycle as a product of transpositions, but 2, 5 isn't a transposition of adjacent elements. So what can we do? We might think of it as follows. In 2, 5, there's a gap between the elements 2 and 5. And we want to find transpositions that fill that gap. So we can either start at 2 and build towards 5 using the transposition 2, 3, or we can start at 5 and build towards 2 using the transposition 4, 5. There's actually another transposition we could use that starts at 5 and another one that starts at 2. Find them yourself. Notice that if we write 2, 5 as a product of 2, 3 and some other permutation, then our original cycle 2, 5, 3 is going to be equal to 2, 3, 2, 3, row, and again, every transposition is its own inverse. So the consecutive 2, 3's cancel, and we're right back where we started. So we don't want to use the transposition 2, 3. Let's use 4, 5 instead, and if we write 2, 5 as a product 4, 5, and row, we find... And we might object to this because our cycle length has increased. We've gone from a transposition to a three cycle. But we might take a closer look. While our cycle length has increased, notice that we've reduced the gap. So instead of a gap between two and five, we now have a smaller gap between two and four. So let's continue reducing that gap. So again, the gap here is now between 2 and 4. So let's use 3, 4 and write 2, 4, 5 as a product of 3, 4 and some other permutation. And again, we can solve for tau. And while we now have an even longer cycle, Notice that the elements in the cycle are consecutive. And so now our cycle consists of adjacent elements. So now let's start breaking this cycle down. So let's let 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, let's take that as a product of 2, 3, and something. And we find. Three, four, five. Let's find this as a product of three, four, and something, and we find. And our last remaining transposition, four, five, is a transposition of adjacent elements. And so here we've written our cycle two, five, three as a product of transpositions where we are only transposing adjacent elements. So notice that while we could write 2, 5, 3 as two 
different products, the number of transpositions in both cases was even. Here there's 2 and here there's 6. Now let's see if that's just a coincidence. We might try to find a decomposition of another cycle, how about 2, 4, 5, 6, both as any way that we can, and that gives us this, or maybe we'll restrict ourselves to transpositions of adjacent elements, in which case one possible decomposition looks like this. And here there's three transpositions, and here there's five, and so we see the number of transpositions in both decompositions is odd. And this leads to the following idea. It appears that Given any permutation sigma, we can express sigma by a sequence of transpositions. But the number of transpositions seems to preserve parity. In other words, if an odd number of transpositions can be used to produce sigma, then any sequence of transpositions that produce sigma will also have an odd number of transpositions. And if an even number can be used to produce sigma, then any sequence will also have an even number of transpositions. And the evidence for this is, well, kind of underwhelming because we've only shown it for two different cycles and for each we only did two decompositions. So we don't have a lot of evidence here to go on, so let's see if we can find a proof.